I love this dude, Theaster Gates. I love this woman, Karen Bay Weems. Thank you. No, no, you sit here. I'll sit here. Then, then, so the, the first thing that I have to say, I have to, I must say this because one of the, you know, we we are not sociologists. We are indeed artists. And um, I've known Theaster now for several years. I have to say this. I've known him now for several years. And then just recently, along with Lava, who is in the audience, um, we were all in Chicago for a really wonderful project that just happened at the bank, which the Astro was just talking about. Um, but it was actually only um, on a private tour that the Astro gave me last two weeks ago that I really understood for the first time, even though Theaster and I talk a lot, and even though he just finished like talking a lot about you know his sort of ideas that I really begin to understand in a very visceral way, in a very clear way, what Dorchester Projects is. And it's not one single thing, it's not one single entity, right? But from, you know, from the housing complex, that has you know, 36 units, a sort of very sophisticated way of sort of reclaiming and redesigning an architectural unit for families to live in, to the studio spaces, uh, to the bank space, which is absolutely phenomenal, with an incredible library, um, uh, in part uh, functioning as an archive for Ebony Magazine. Ebony and Jet magazine is sort of, you know, a very, very important, I mean, you know, like this is like really an enormously important um, series of projects that I think is absolutely extraordinary. You know, and so there, there, there are many, and, and it continues to grow. So not only do you have the bank, but you've also in recent year, in the recent year, purchased um, an old high school yeah. that is now in the process of being Redeveloped. So I think that this is really sort of a really important project, and I'm really sorry that we weren't able to see uh, more of the slides. But I think that, that um, for me, from my vantage point, um, beyond, I think, Rick Lowe's project, um, uh, Valerie, in um, uh, Houston project, Row House, which I think is one of the seminal, mm -hmm. seminal um, projects in this, 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 this country, the next to that, I think, uh, in, in a remarkable way, um, uh, that you stand on the sh shoulders of Rick right. in developing this extraordinary project um, in Dorchester and south side of Chicago. And I just want to salute you. Yeah. I want to salute you. Because <laughs> so, okay. he didn't say all that, I had to say some of that. Okay. Wow. So um, we've we've built this afternoon on questions, on the generation of questions, and I, I just want to shout out um, one more time the the YBCA 100 that um, this group of um, folks that have um, participated in radical presence that. Um, have participated in the YBCA 100 um, process um, were all brought into the fold ultimately because of the way that um, you all provoke. Right? Not just what you do, but how you trouble the waters. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, Carrie May, I was really struck by um, a phrase that you used. You were talking about young people, and you said, um, I had to figure out a way to pull the young people to me. Mm -hmm. um, and that strikes me because uh, I don't know how many people here are under 20. Like one? There's one right back there. The one, you. <laughs> Deborah's son. Stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that, that's, you know, th that's how it feels, you know, a lot to be the black person in the room. Or to be the, <laughs> you, you know, like you're looking around or to, to, you know, to be the one in the room, whatever that might mean. You know, and um, it, it, it strikes me that um, young people, not even just under 20, but I would even suggest under 30 are not as present in this conversation. So I know one of the things you know, that both of you talked about was the employment of young people, mm -hmm. yes. right? The, the tracking of young people through your methodologies, through your ideologies um, into um, the work. And I'm just, just wondering, um, and, and maybe just as kind of a, a final um, thought on this, 
you know, no social movement happens without young people. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, under 30. So we, you know, um, we praise our, uh, the activists among us that have um, been in the work 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. But I, you know, when I, yeah, when I look back at our photography, when I look back at the archives, when we look back through our um, social histories, it's always the young folks. So I guess, I guess that's my first question. Um, is um, how did you arrive at your strategies for activating young people? And when did it become most clear to you that um, in order to further, further the work that young people were going to be necessary? Well, I mean, um, but, you know, I, I teach. I teach, and, and you know, for instance, when I started, as, as the Astra does too, when I started my project, I was teaching at, at, um, um, at Syracuse University, uh, working with a group of young people, really thinking about this, this uh, train, you know, really starting to train students, really thinking about this sort of idea about art and civic dialogue, mm -hmm. you know, art and social engagement, knowing that it was going to become like very, very, very important very important, and that, it, that in the future, any number of universities would have these kinds of programs that they saw as important and almost endemic to the way in which their art practices would evolve. So it's been sort, sort of interesting. So that, that, that was sort of like a no-brainer. Yeah. I mean, I th don't think that it's just about, it's, it's about having young, young people, but it's also about having multi-generations. Yeah. This is a multi-generational thing, right? That we need young people and old people and middle-aged people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, yes. right? And so, you know, what young people bring, which I think is absolutely key, is an extraordinary energy. So, so the, for instance, as you said, you know, about Black Lives Matter, you know, these are sort of, you know, incredible young people who are really sort of um, attempting in their way to um, fashion a, a way forward. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, you know, that's, it's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, you know, the thing that is uh, most uh, uh, important for me and also most disconcerting for me, and when you ask me what is the thing that keeps you up at night, mm -hmm. it is, I think, fundamentally, this sort of overall lack of dynamic um, organization and dynamic leadership mm -hmm. that uh, I think that uh, without it, um, that we are in deep trouble. Mm -hmm. That I don't think that social institutions, or rather uh, that cultural institutions, try as we might, mm -hmm. that artists try as we might. Mm -hmm. um, we are really, in the, at the end of the day, we are supporters of something that is really much larger than ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, has yet to materialize in a serious way. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, um, and I'm frightened, mm -hmm. and I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about a future, and yet we don't talk really about what kind of future that might be. Right. So anyway. Yeah. Thank you. you know, it, it makes two things, the, one about youth, one about leadership. Before I started doing what I'm doing now, I was an after-school arts teacher teaching pottery on the west side, and I would leave my day job at the Transit Authority Mm -hmm. to go teach my pottery classes, you know, at ACT charter school to these high school kids. And I remember one, and I was teaching all the time, I remember one moment where after about a year, there was one student who felt really close to me at, through the work. He saw that I dressed weird, I was a little different, <laughs> you know, and this kid, made a, a, a sexual advance toward me. Mm. And it was his way of like coming out. But there was, but we were on the west side and like the, all the kids were seemingly thugs. But the more time that I spent with these kids, the more I realized that, that the male men, the male students were all interested in what other options there were in the world besides whatever they thought was crazy on the west side. Mm -hmm. And the only way that this guy had to like express his care and budding sexuality was actually like a violent attack toward me. Mm -hmm. This is the only way he had seen it. Yeah. And so when you, when you think about the, the, the complexity, and this is why I'm glad that there are things like Brave New Voices 
young Chicago authors, Louder Than a Bomb. The reason that, that those kinds of in entities are so important is because they allow students voice and culture making possibilities that are just not there. And so I found myself wanting to invest not only in teaching, but in the platform that would allow for young people to have a place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's beautiful about what you're saying, Carrie Mae, is that there's a way in which when you're thinking about causes, mm -hmm. you can't just think about one set of folk. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that we've too often neglected the power of young people in our country. And that, that where, where there are all these things that divide, like I heard recently that when kids are being introduced to drug culture, they essentially make minimum wage to sling, mm. right? If you look at how much money a kid makes when they sling in marijuana, they actually don't make money. They like have to like buy in. So they get like a little bit of cash. Right. But that cash comes with the burden of carrying a gun, shooting somebody, um, putting their family at risk, right? So the same, the money that we give to students to be artists, is the same money kids are being paid by drug dealers to put their lives on the line. Mm. And there are more opportunities for them as drug dealers than there would be in this kind of environment. Yeah. And so, who, so how do we, everybody should have a kid working for them. Everybody's lawn should be mowed. Everybody's windows should be washed. It shouldn't be like I'm waiting on the city of Rochester to give me the money either. It's like at some point, that's right. Right? And it's like, and either, either you will employ them or they will take your shit. That's real talk. That's right. That's right. You know, but I think that this is so important. One of the th things that you have said that I think is, you know, that, that, that really, really matters is that, you know, half the key to a lot of this to, I mean, you know, I mean, in one way, you know, I, I, you know, I, I wake up and I, and I look out at the expanse of the sky and into that in infinite space, and I think I'm nothing, mm. Mm. right? I'm just dust, maybe. I'm just a particle mm. blowing in the wind, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that um, what I have to offer is just dust mm -hmm. in relationship to the vastness of what's needed, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And yet I am committed yeah. to shaping that dust yeah. as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And so if you start where you are, yes. if you start where you live, yeah. if you start with that child that is next to you, right? You know, that, that I think is one of the most important things that you can do in this kind of work that I'm attempting to yes. do, the work that you're doing. I'm not in anybody else's neighborhood yes. but my own. Yes. I'm not trying to ask permission. I don't need to ask permission. I'm not trying to figure out any of that. I'm trying to figure out simply how to make it happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How to make it happen and how to strategize. And, you know, and that's the thing that keeps me up, right? right? You know, Who do I need to talk to tomorrow morning that is going to make it possible for me to put this vocational school into place so that I can train some of these kids in this particular way so that they know yeah. that there is a possibility, that there's this one little thing yeah. that they can do that would make all the difference in terms of the life that they will lead. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's, you know, it's sort of small as it sounds, that ability to save one person, yeah. one life, mm -hmm. matters to me. Well, you know, Carrie Mae, that's why uh, it's great that we're closing radical presence, because when I think about that phrase, what does it mean to be present, mm -hmm. right? And, and so present, like what, what a young artist gets from being in your presence. Yeah. Um, presence, like the impact of that when that artist tells her girlfriends, his boys, about that interaction. Right. The possibility of being your intern or traveling with you or your photographic assistant or one of the kids that are, right? And that that, that presence, um, it is one-to-one, -one, but it's, it's also sometimes one-to-a-thousand. That's, right. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's like, what does it mean to be present, uh, Carrie James Marshall style, mm -hmm. in, a, in a history book uh, on art history? Sure. What does it mean to have a book 
that a kid could accidentally stumble upon. And so these ways, these presences that we might have. Yeah. Uh, and so I think that in addition to the one-to-one, -one, there are also these things. These reverberations. The, the billboard is radical presence. Word. The billboard is radical presence. Word. Right? So, um, so that brings me to something that, um, that Will Chase talked about, which is this notion of um, signal to noise. Mm. But there's a lot of noise mm -hmm. um, in our culture. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult to um, channel your signal above the noise. Yes. And it, yes. it, it strikes me that um, neither one of you are anti-capitalist. You're just using capitalism in a different kind of way. Well, I am anti-capitalist. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I am. Yeah, say that. Say yeah. that. <laughs> I'm a socialist. OK, well, before we go there, because I see the clock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know, but, yeah. but, but you know, but Please. the thing that's interesting about this idea about noise, I, I, I love yeah. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one afternoon, uh, I received a, a check in the mail. It was, it was a check for $25 from a woman who was driving down the street and she saw my billboard and so she said, wait a minute, they're not selling me anything. Mm. Huh. So she pulled over to the side of the road and she shut down the name of like the, the, the billboard company and she went home and she called the billboard company and she mm. said, I was just on this road and I saw this sign. Mm. What is that? And who is I mean, who's responsible for that, right? You know, and, and, and eventually uh, she was kind enough to send me a $25 check in the mail to say, can, you know, can, can keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. But I think the important part about that was that what we do, um, because it is a, a very focused sound, um, really does, in fact, cut through mm -hmm. the noise. Mm -hmm. It really cuts to the noise to something that I think is... Is, uh, is, 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 is genuine, that is not necessarily related to commerce, mm -hmm. that's not related to capital, mm -hmm. but is really uh, 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 devoted to a kind of social capital that mm -hmm. needs to be investigated. It's a kind of critique, yeah. a very smart and sophisticated mm -hmm. level of critique that is being heard. Mm -hmm. And so that excites me and that interests me. And I know, therefore, then, that we have, you know, with all that is going on, that people are listening for a certain sound, right. something that rubs up against the truth yes. in the way that they understand the truth to be. Yes. And that, I think, is interesting. And so that gives me a certain kind of hope and a certain yeah. possibility. Um, it, it, uh, it occurs to me, yeah, um, that that's what we're attempting. I'm sorry? This is what we're attempting at YBCA, I think, to, in very many ways, undo our own, I shouldn't say undo our own history, but to reinvestigate our history, the sacred ground that, this, um, yes. that these institutions were, uh, these buildings were built on. Yes. The communities that were. Uh, I, I, when I drove into San Francisco for the first time, I drove into this neighborhood. Mm. And it was a very, 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 very different neighborhood. Yeah. But this is, this is interesting. I mean, you know, so that at this point, what is it that you really believe that the institution needs to be in order to be viable, uh, a viable entity to yeah. the society in which it serves or the group in which it serves? Did we get that? Because that's the question. <laughs> Can you say that one more time? You know? You know? It's, re it's recorded. It's, 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 it's in the archive. But that's the question that we're grappling with. Yeah. Who do we need to be? What do you think that that is? Well, this is why I brought you guys up here. <laughs> here's, here's what I know. But it's fascinating, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. You know, and it takes, it's a longer conversation than seven minutes. Yeah. But I think that it's key. I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. What do we really expect institutions to be? What is the contemporary role of the institution yeah. in relationship to the society that it serves? Yeah. What do you want it to be, right? How does it function? Mm -hmm. And Bamuti, you know, the, the challenge that we have is, is that we go to our museum conferences every year, and every year museums confer that who they were last year and who they might be the year after, that, that we're all doing okay. Mm -hmm. And that if you ever deviate from museumness, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you start looking too different yeah. from, the, from the things around you, Mm -hmm. you start to create a new challenge for yourself. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And so part of the question of who am I becoming is kind of the same question that individuals have to ask themselves or nations have to ask themselves. Black people, who are we becoming, right? And then what kind of courage, if you're willing to ask yourself that kind of question of who do we want to be, do you have the courage to be that? To be that. To be that, you know, the, the the thing that's you know very interesting is that you you know in some ways we 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 don't know. Right. You know, in some ways we don't know. We do know that you know for, you know institutions are difficult because institutions become institutionalized. Right. This is the problem of institutions, yeah. right? Which is the reason that it becomes so important to always have contemporary artists who are some of the most imaginative thinkers around us figuring out what it needs to be at any given time because it's not fixed, right? It will never be fixed, right? right? I mean, or it's, you know, institutions are always changing, right? What they are, you know, what MoMA was 50 years ago is not what MoMA is today. What MoMA will be in 25 years as the country becomes a, my, you know, a majority minority you know, country, right? It has to step up to the plate, and it has to step up in a very, very different way. But that will take time. Mm -hmm. And I think that a part of, you know, I mean, I love the idea that you're asking these sort of important questions. And of course, in San Francisco, mm -hmm. you're asking them in a very particular kind of context. It's sure. very different than the context of the Midwest, or in the yeah. South, or, oh, or yeah. in the East. What does this institution need to be? And what yeah. this institution is will be very different than what MoMA is across the street, mm -hmm. right? So you're in dialogue. You're in a dialogue with them. You know? So then what is the relationship that you want to have ongoingly with its, the, sort of the, the dynamic community of artists and its, 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 its public? Public, mm. right, to uh, bring to the fore in order to have ongoing and stimulating discussion. Mm. So, here's how I feel. I feel like I'm at the club and they just played my song. We gonna dance. Wait, hold up. I feel, man, I feel like they just played, you know, they just played my song and then, um, but they played it after Last Call. And the lights came up. The lights came up. And I just I can't got close. I, I can't get that last one. I can't drink. get that, and I can't, can't get, get close to it. And I can't just I can't get the digits. So <laughs> I mean, you know. And so uh, we'll see you next year, same time. Um, but the Astor yeah. and I have decided that these conversations are absolutely much too important yeah. for 20 minutes. Agreed. So Don't ever do this. So that's to us number again. one. <laughs> that's number one. If you're gonna bring us from New York and Chicago, you might as well talk. Yeah. So, so here's what we can do. Here's what we can do. Well, we'll, we'll meet you all at the Astros at the bank in Chicago. So, so um, we can we can meet in we can meet in three places. We can meet upstate. We can meet in Chicago, or we can meet in the lobby. For <laughs> right cocktails. Now. Um, we're about to, yes, we're about to uh, check out a, a goodbye um, for the day from our friend Bill T. Jones, right on. Um, who is also um, one of our honorees, was not able to make it. He's performing um, um, a piece uh, down the coast. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the piece is called Story Time, and for those of you who are familiar, he took a, the John Cage um, kind of challenge of creating these one minute stories. So he's created a one minute story for us um, um, that he's about to share with us. Um, after that, um, we're gonna go into the lobby. We're definitely going to celebrate everyone that's here, the close of Radical Presence. We're going to celebrate the YBCA 100 because you people are just um, ridiculous. We're gonna celebrate this process. Um, and um, if you wanna continue with us, Sankai Juku is in the theater. Um, beginning at 7.30 p.m. There's a crazy party happening in here with like 95 performers from all over the African diaspora. It's called Skin. That'll be happening um, tonight. And wherever you people are, that's where I want to be. That's a fact. Yeah. Um, go into the galleries, please. In the loading dock, um, we have um, garage cinema that's cracking. The whole um, building really is, it on? is a lot. Is it um, on? It's, it's on. It's on. It's on. So, you know, just follow her because that's where the party's at. Y'all, Thank you so much for being involved in this process with us. This is Fiasa Gates.
Karen May Weems. Thank you to Kyle, to Byron, to everyone that's participated this evening.